welcome back to HGTV Handmade. I'm Dennis. I'm Andrew. And we are the Crafty Lumberjacks. And welcome back to our apartment. You know, we've lived here for the past six years and we've been talking about moving for the past three years, but we can't commit. Yes, yeah, so it was time to refresh our space and we're gonna do that by making three easy, no so apartment friendly window treatments. Yeah, we're going to make some for the living room, the bedroom and our kitchen. Yes, let's start by taking these babies down. Yeah. We're gonna start with inexpensive uh, blackout shades. Uh, we have these up in our bedroom because we love to sleep in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want any light coming in. These are literally the cheapest shades you can get at the hardware store. Um, and we're just gonna add some interest to them by painting on them. Okay, so the first thing, we're gonna roll it out. All right. And then we're gonna slide out the bottom bar. And this is actually what we're going to use to paint it. And what we're going to do is we're just gonna take our brush and we're gonna dab it on the full bar and then we're just going to stamp horizontal lines throughout. We're gonna start uh, pretty close and then we're gonna gradually go farther and farther and farther. And when you're doing this, we found that dabbing the paint was much better than uh, wiping it on just because you actually wipe off the paint if you uh, use brush strips. So we're just gonna eyeball it. Try to be as straight as we can. And then press down. Pressing, pressing, pressing. Now we're not going for a clean line here. It's gonna be a little messy, but that's the look we're going for. Perfect. Beautiful. That looks great. It's almost creating like an indigo. Uh, Batik yeah, type look. feel. All right, and you do want to apply every time you go. And we tried this with a few different looks, but we found that we liked uh, a simpler pattern better than a full uh, painted shade. And you just wanna make sure before you put this back up or roll it back up that it's all dry, maybe about two hours. Um, just because it's clumpy in some areas, you can give it a, the old uh, touch test. Just make sure it's all dry before it rolls back up. So we're just gonna wipe down the bar. Yes, then we're gonna set these to dry, and while they're drying, we're gonna start with our cafe curtains for the kitchen. All right, so now we're making a cafe curtain for the kitchen, and a cafe curtain is basically a curtain for the bottom half of your window. So I already measured my curtain, uh, or sorry, my fabric rather, and I'm just gonna rip it in half here because again, I wanna create two separate panels for the curtain. So we're using iron-on adhesive tape. You can use whichever one you like. They have a few different types out there. I like this one because it sticks on one side and then you peel it off on the other side. I'm gonna do my hems a little bit differently. Um, I like to do my hems right on the edge of the fabric and then fold the fabric over on top of the hem. So I'm just gonna line up my tape here running the edge of the fabric and I start to iron it on. This to get it stuck, you need about two seconds. We're using a medium heat so for this specific iron-on adhesive, you wanna iron it on and then wait until it cools before you take off the strip here. Okay, so I'm gonna create my first hem here. I'm just gonna fold, you can kinda see the tape here, it's a little shiny. I'm just gonna fold it right over on itself and then I'm gonna iron this down. And this now, we started with two seconds, now you wanna uh, press it down for about eight seconds. And you can kinda check it, see, make sure it's sticking. And same deal with this. Once you have it set, you wanna wait until it cools. You don't wanna to touch it until it cools. We would probably recommend just using an iron for this specific project. You don't wanna use this and then iron your clothes just because sometimes it will get a little tacky or oh, sticky yeah. on it. So we have an iron for our craft projects and then we have an iron for our clothing. Just kidding, we don't have an iron for clothing. <laughs> we use a steamer, the shower. Okay, we have our first hem done. Looks pretty good. That looks really good. So I'm gonna start on the other side of the fabric here to create my other hem. And then on the bottom here, I'm just gonna do a box fold where I'm gonna fold it right over itself. Great, so for the top here, we're gonna add another strip of the adhesive bond. Um, we wanna create a tunnel for our tension rod. So we're gonna put a strip on the top here, fold it over, and then Andrew and I like a little bling, a little festive flourish. So we wanna create a little ruffle, and by doing that, uh, we are going to add another uh, strip of adhesive bond right there. That's great, and now we're just gonna iron it shut. Yeah, so once we put these both on the curtain, um, they're gonna start to ruffle up just because they're gonna kinda like squish in. 
And it'll create this really nice looking thing. Ruffle. They look great. They do. We're gonna go put these up in the kitchen. And now that we're done with these, we're gonna work on our living room. We have a really quick hack. Let's get to it. All right, so we're gonna make some Roman shades out of these uh, really inexpensive mini blinds. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our shades and cut the ladder. And, and this is the center cord right here. Do not cut that cord because then you have to buy new blinds. All right. Whee! Keep it going, keep it going. Keep it going, keep it going. All right, and now just lay it flat. And the easiest way to do this is to just make sure your shades are completely open. Uh, we're also gonna take out our little blind here, or our, what is this called? Like a little? Wand, I don't know. Magic uh, wand. Okay, we're gonna start cutting our ladder. Our ladder. So you're gonna cut between every single one. And now that we got the top cut off here, there's just a little piece still attached to the top ring there. I'm just gonna give it a cut and then re the rest of it should just slide right out. All right, since all right. these are literally the cheapest mini blinds that you can buy, uh, all of the slats are pretty flimsy. So because we're adding our fabric to the top here, we wanna glue a few pieces of our slats together just to uh, reinforce it and make sure it's nice and sturdy. Yeah, we're just using a little bit of super glue on the ends here. Yeah, what you don't wanna do is glue the, um, the string to it. You wanna make sure that the string can go through easily. So now we're just gonna cut off the extra blinds. And be super careful, don't cut the main string. Oh it's gonna gosh. keep everything together. After all this work, that'd be the <laughs> Oh worst. my gosh, yeah, you don't want that to happen now. Oh my gosh. Tricked ya. Oh. No comment. So we already pre-measured our fabric. We wanted it a bit longer than the blinds. We used our same adhesive strip that we use for our cafe curtains on the sides of our fabric to create a nice hem. And we're gonna lay our blinds directly on top Directly of the on top. So you want the front of the blinds to lay down onto the fabric, just like that. And now we're just gonna start spacing out our slats. Yeah, and there's a whole bunch of different ways to do the no sew Roman shades, but we want to keep it simple, so we have our hem, our seams here, right uh, the same length of our slats. So now that our blinds are kind of laid out, our slats rather, we're gonna measure, we want them about six inches apart. And now because we wanted a quick fix, we're using hot glue. We would recommend fabric glue for this project with maybe a little hot glue on each end of the blinds. Yeah. Uh, but we just want it quick and done, so we're just yeah. using hot glue. Here we go, we wanna try to work pretty quick. Again, don't glue the string, cause that's gonna keep everything together. And then we're just gonna fold it over and just press lightly, just because we don't want the glue to show through the curtain. So again, we're gonna measure about seven down, just cause we want them to fall at about six. All right, so now that we have all of our slats glued down, we are going to glue the top and the bottom and then cut off the extra and then tuck it in nicely. Obviously, you're gonna see the back of this, people, your neighbors, or whoever is outside. So if you want, you can add another piece of fabric there just because the back could look a little ugly if you want it to be clean. But for our purposes here in Queens, we're not gonna worry about we it. We don't like our neighbors. So. <laughs> all right, we're gonna let these dry. And then we're gonna hang up our new shades. Right, looks this pretty like even. Oh, yeah, I, think that looks I can't. Good. It totally transformed our space. I can't believe these were our mini blinds. I can't believe it here. And now the neighbors can't peek in. Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> Let us know which was your favorite window makeover. Leave a comment and a like and a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.